let's take a look at how kits are created and used in GroovePacker. When items are imported into GroovePacker, they all start out as regular items. From there, you can tell GroovePacker that an item is a kit by using the Change This Product to a Kit link. When you do that, you'll see several options appear at the bottom of the kit page. You have buttons for adding items to the kit and a few options for how the kit should be scanned. So let's add some items to this kit. When you click the button, you'll get a screen with a list of all the possible items that can be added. Just start typing the SKU or product name and you'll get a list of results. Click to highlight and then continue searching for the other items in the kit if there's multiple items. When you've selected all the items in the kit, just hit save and close. They'll all be added in one go. The inventory levels for each of the items in the kit will be shown here, and if you have more than one of each item in the kit, you can specify that with the quantity in kit. Packing order determines how the items will be prompted if each one is being scanned individually. Speaking of scanning, there's three options here that determine how the kit will be scanned. The first is to always be scanned as a single SKU. This works great if your kits are pre-packed, but you still want to deduct the items individually from inventory. The second option is to always scan the kit as individual part items. Whenever this kit appears in an order, it'll prompt to scan each individual item. The third option will start out by prompting the kit as a single item. Then, if you scan any of the items that are in that kit, and those items don't exist in the order, it'll automatically split apart the kit and begin suggesting the different items in the kit. This works out great if you sometimes prepack your kits, but you don't always. Kits have some additional requirements in order for them to be active in GroovePacker. In addition to having to have a name, a SKU, and a barcode for a kit product to be active, you also have to have at least one active product in that kit. Let's take a quick look at scanning this kit in an order. This order happens to have this kit that we just created. We'll control or command click it to open it and scan and pack. This kit is set up to dynamically split if we scan one of the items in the kit. So we'll start out by scanning the comb. When we do, GroovePacker realizes that there are no other combs in that order and that there is one in that kit. So it automatically splits the kit and shows that we've scanned one comb. It then displays the other items that will need to be packed in the kit, and it begins prompting them. One quick tip for creating kits. If you have alias products in GroovePacker, it's helpful to create the aliases before you create the kits. It's also possible to have a kit that just has multiple instances of the same item. For example, we could take this comb item and duplicate it and create a 10 pack of combs. We'll go to our copied comb here. We'll edit its name. We'll also need to make sure that we give it a skew and barcode. which can definitely be the same if we want. Notice that when we change the product to a kit, it'll automatically go to a new product because it's a kit that doesn't have any items. We'll click here to add products to kit and we'll find our original comb. Now all we need to do is change this to a 10 to let GroovePacker know that there's 10 of those items. And that's it, you're ready to go. If you know that your 10 pack is always going to be pre-packed and it has its own barcode, you can select to always be scanned as a single SKU. If you're not sure because you don't always pre-pack them, you can leave it as switch as needed. And there you go, your 10 pack of combs is ready to go. It'll show up in the kits list with your other kits. And that's how you create and use kits in GroovePacker. Thanks for watching. Bye.